Tell us a little bit about the domestic problem that we have with sex trafficking. Sex trafficking is a multi-billion dollar industry and it needs a product, it needs a buyer, and somebody's just all too happy to get a product and take it to market and that's what we call the trafficker and often the pimp. There is a lot of that happening with minors. Tell me what you're uncovering with regard to boys and girls being taken into this. We're just about two-thirds through the investigation of major cities throughout the United States and the trafficking of children for commercial sex. What we're finding is really shown by the story of a 12 to 16 year old. She was snatched going to school at 12. The man had been walking alongside of her. Often he was an older teenager as she went to school. Come along six months, he'd built a relationship. She was a gifted, smart little girl. And that's why she was walking the extra blocks to a special school. She got in the car with him and disappeared. Well, she was arrested twice, taken back to her home, and they couldn't understand why he'd get her again. And then she was arrested 19 more times before she was 16 in just about that many states. What we found is once a child, kidnapped, lured, deceived, that child is with the adult trafficker. The six magic words will control her. I know where I got you. And those controlling words say, I know how to get your mother. I can beat you again. There's no safe place in the world for you. And so this little girl, we just have prosecuted the pimp. And I can't tell you much more, but by the time this comes out, you might actually be able to know who he is. I'll go into the prison in a couple of weeks and interview him. He was a part of a network, and he was selling girls between Louisiana to Toledo, Ohio, clear over to Kansas all the way to Seattle, and they had a pimp network of our little girls just snatched and lured for a product to men all over the United States that are pretty common, pretty ordinary, buying them because they're labeled prostitute. In what ways does the American culture contribute to the problem of sex trafficking? The American culture has started to tolerate two things. One, commercial sex. What happens here stays here means thousands of little girls have been documented to be brought into Las Vegas now, we have documented this, and are sold to pretty ordinary tourists as well as local men, and you don't find any of the buyers being arrested because in the man's mind, oh, she's a prostitute. In the society's mind, she's a prostitute. And so what we have is a cultural issue that the man is perceived as just using a prostitute, no matter what the age is. What we found is in the culture is the age is going younger and younger as men are visualizing something young. They're seeing young porn. They're seeing young bodies, no stretch marks. And so when you come to actualization from visualization, that actualization has to replicate something similar and then we're finding it's going younger and younger as porn is going younger. We found one out of five images online are really of children. Not that blurry age of not being able to understand or see, but really children. So many people say that uh, posing for porn or stripping is just a choice that a woman makes. Do you agree with that statement? I've spent 10 years of my life this year restoring little girls and young women uh, who have been in the commercial sex industry, and this is all over the world. I love them very deeply. And yet some, I found one who made an adult choice, one in 10 years. The average age a child is put into commercial sex around the world, as well as here in the United States, is 11 to 14. So a 12-year-old is the common product. An adult woman with any other choices, we know she's not going to make that choice. Now, we know the meth uh, issue in some areas, areas, you will find a few women who start meth as adults in a, in a trauma situation. But that's a very rare thing worldwide. She's a child, she's innocent, and she should be protected. Is there anything that the average person out there can do to help with the fight? First of all, we have to change our language. We have to stop calling anyone a prostitute and call them a prostituted person, especially a prostituted child. So stop using the language that assigns the crime committed against them to them. We don't call any other crime by the name committed against the person. So second, what you can do is be aware and become involved in your community. There are all kinds of groups that are starting to fight what would be called child prostitution. Well, those are prostituted children. We have not found any children that can survive on the street because they can't rent, they can't buy food, 
They can't survive on the street if they're a female. Not at all. So they are being pimped. We literally can track the pimp, and we're asking you to call your prosecutors, call your sheriffs, your own community, and say, do we arrest girls under 18 who are really legally traffic victims, and you're calling them prostitutes? You can start right now in your community, and you can feed back to Shared Hope the answer. Because what we're finding all over the world in the first 10 evaluations we're doing, that in every community they're picked up as a prostitute, a few don't put them in jail very long, but most of them put them in jail for several weeks, charge them with the crimes they're committing in prostitution, and let the man that was picked up with them walk. We have 183 cases in one block in Las Vegas. Not one man can be determined to have been arrested, and we had 183 kids, an average age of 15, who were arrested and put in jail. Very serious issue. You can also say... And this is not an issue of discrimination or immigration. But you can say, if you would rescue a 15-year-old Thai girl who's being used in your town and she gets services as a traffic victim and she's with a 15-year-old American girl who's being sold, treat them the same, please. Don't call the 15-year-old a prostitute and put her in jail and take the other to the federal government and get her services. Make sure that the Law and the practice are the same. What we found is all over the United States, even in cases where there are multiple raids, where we had five girls, three foreign, two domestic, the two domestic were treated as prostitutes, young minors, and the three foreigns were taken into protective, protective custody because they know the pimps will get them again. And just what happened was the little girls were dropped off at a shelter, no protection, and clearly the pimps got them again. Linda Smith, so terrific to have you here with us today. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And everything you do and everyone you speak to is going to change lives, but only if someone takes action today.